The Elves and the Shoemaker. Once there was a shoemaker. All day long, he sat at a workbench in his shoe shop. Years ago, he had made wonderful shoes. They were admired far and wide, but things had changed. The shoemaker had grown old. His back ached, and his fingers hurt from stitching tough leather. He no longer made such wonderful shoes. No one wanted to buy them. He only had enough money to make one more pair. The shoemaker's wife saw how tired he was. Make them in the morning, she said. So the shoemaker left the shoe leather on his workbench and went to bed. The next morning he had a big surprise. There on the bench were brand new shoes. And what magnificent shoes! They were sleek and shiny and perfectly stitched. The shoemaker sold them the moment he opened his shop. What fabulous footwear! Now he could afford leather to make two pairs of shoes. He left the leather on his workbench and went to bed. In the morning, two pairs of boots stood there. They're even better than the last pair. The shoemaker sold them in minutes. What lovely laces! What beautiful boots! Now he could afford leather for four pairs of shoes. Again, he left the leather on his workbench, and again new shoes appeared overnight. Every morning for several weeks, the shoemaker found new shoes on his workbench. They had shiny buckles, twirly ribbons, and fancy bows. Every day, the shoemaker and his wife sold the new shoes in their shop. Handsome heels, splendid slippers, magnificent moccasins. Now everyone wanted the shoemaker's shoes. He's back to his best, but the shoemaker felt bad. They were not really his shoes; someone else had done all the work. Let's hide in the workshop tonight," his wife suggested. "We can see who is making the shoes." That night, the shop door creaked open. Soft feet padded across the floor. Two tiny figures sprang up onto the workbench. Elves gasped the shoemaker's wife. The little creatures were barefoot and wore only rags. The elves grinned and giggled. They found some shoe leather and a needle and thread. Then they began to work. They worked so fast their hands were a blur. The whole time they laughed and sang. Finally, the elves leaped from the bench and rushed out into the dawn night. Elves, the shoemaker muttered. Elves, his wife said again. Elves, they cried together. It seemed impossible, but the new shoes proved it was real, the finest pair yet. That day, the shoe shop was busier than ever, but the shoemaker kept thinking about the elves. I must make something for them in return," he said. "But what can I make that they might want?" That afternoon, the shoemaker sat at his workbench, and he worked. His back ached and his fingers hurt, but he kept on working until moonlight shone through the shop window. He placed what he had made on the bench. Then he hid again with his wife. I wonder what he made. The elves sneaked silently into the shop. When they saw the shoemaker's gifts, they squealed with joy. New clothes! The little suits were finer than anything worn by lords or ladies or kings or queens. What happy little elves we are! We no longer workmen shall we be. The light of the elves danced around the bench, admiring their new suits. Finally, they skipped out of the door and into the silver moonlight. We look so fine in our new suits. We no longer shall we stitch new boots. The shoemaker and his wife never saw the elves again. 
or knew why the creatures had helped them. But now they had enough money to live comfortably for the rest of their lives. And so they did. The end.